That was the first part of the introductory chapter of this course unit. Now, we will continue, of course, with the definition of the so-called project context and its connection to the research objective. In principle, we need to understand what is the meaning of the project context. And here, we define precisely where the problem is allocated and how this problem is connected to individual targets or collective targets. Each of these targets, of course, have aims, specific aims that will depend on whether the project is theoretical, is in a sort of theoretical framework where you want to extend some views or you want to create new theories, you just want to bridge some knowledge gap. Or the aim that is connected to the target, which can be also collective for individual, that aim can be also practical more in an engineering field where you instigate new developments, where you will have artifacts, you will design artifacts, you will create a new situation by solving a current problem, or basically you are just solving practical problems. Here, the context of course then will be defined by two types of aims, coming from the theoretical framework or coming from a practical, more practical framework. We need to define properly the jargon of the course unit. And one of the key words that we will use again and again is, of course, contribution. For instance, when we go to the key literature, when we go to scientific papers, so there is always, at the very beginning of the paper, one paragraph or a section dedicated to the contribution. So the author of that document emphasizes different elements connected to their own work and why the document is precisely new in comparison to other documents that were previously published or other works that are being currently done. Now here our contribution will rely of course on the problem to, this, to the solution phase where we want to solve actually that problem indirectly or partially and the problem this is going to be complex or the fundamental question that we want to answer is not so ubiquitous. Then this is part of our context, the project context. And if we are thinking about the research objective, it means that once we achieve that objective, and if we think about the research or design questions, it means that we once we answer those questions, certainly you as a researcher, you as an engineer, have done some contribution to the field. Two types of research projects are the core elements of the course unit. First, we address the theory-oriented type of projects, where we developed new theories, or where we can actually test existing theories, or simply where the research requires two types of cycles, the empirical cycle or the scientific method. And if you take a close look of both cycles, actually they are quite similar, just proposed by different authors, of course. Now, besides th theory-oriented type of projects, we also will deal with practice-oriented projects. And here, the practice-oriented projects are, in principle, connected to two types of cycles, the intervention cycle and the problem-solving cycle. The intervention cycle is highly connected to uh, social sciences, but the way I have introduced the intervention cycle for the course unit is done such that you can also use it for the engineering problems or the fundamental oriented type of problems or what type of questions that we will address. And also we have the problem solving cycle. I need to be clear about the cycles. During the development of of methods and tools when we ask what sort of method are you going to use to solve or to answer your questions and you can always mention briefly that your methodology your framework will rely more closely to a problem solving cycle or closely to the empirical cycle that is okay but that's certainly not enough we really want you to go to the literature. We really want you to bring key tools and methods. Really 
demonstrated by author, researchers, and scientists. Mentioning only the cycles is not enough. But, for instance, saying that you will make use of the software Aspen, where you will test different scenarios, where you can actually uh, test theories on, on, on extracting CO2 or fixing CO2 from the environment, current technology that is uh, very popular. So we can make use of this software. And, or you can say, okay, no, but there are a certain, certain papers that actually make use of a different type of software. So they simulate chemical processes via MATLAB. So because we have the license or because the, this author claims that that tool is precisely the right way. And again, it's not only about tools and it's not only about cycles. It can be also about methods. In operations research, are we going to use some sort of linear programming method? Or in control engineering, are we going to use linear control? Or are we going to use nonlinear control? What is the type of mathematical modeling? You really get in depth with respect to methods and tools. But nonetheless, when you define cycles, it means that those are highly connected to the type of research that we will do, whether theory-oriented or practice-oriented. In theory-oriented research, we have normally two branches, theory development and theory testing. Theory development, okay, gaps in the construction of a theory. And again, I'm using the jargon of the book here. So what are these gaps? For instance, during the 60s, 70s, and even the 80s, the so-called extreme theory, the one that tries to explain the physics of fundamental particles, the physics of matter in streams, was very popular. And at the beginning of the 90s, there were five different versions of the same theory, five different points of view. And it was until this professor, Edward Witten, came and he has uh, proposed a framework and he has demonstrated via his mathematical framework and mathematical physics that those five points of view actually were coming from one general framework. They were all part of the same theory, variations of the same theory. So he basically filled the gap in understanding string theory until the 90s, of course. Now, theory testing. So you can always go and dig into the fundamental dynamics of physical systems like robotics. You can always work out in paper how a robot will be faster and it will achieve accuracy, how it will follow some sort of trajectory. You can develop these theorems in paper. You can even um, claim that this is going to be quite a stable performance for the robot. But you really need to test it. And in the theory testing, you can actually follow some simulation examples where you actually see if your theorem works or not, if what you have claimed in the paper is a reality. But you can take another step and you can test your theory. You can test your theorem in the physical robot, in the real machine. And that's a little bit more complicated because you really need real parameters from the robot, real parameters from the artifact. But again, we are still dealing with, okay, so yes, it's an engineering problem, robotics, but it's highly connected to the field of, of control theory. And again, it's testing your own theorems. So it's not that you are developing your theory again, but you are testing your theory. So you are test adjusting or refining those existing point of view. Again, when the book was written, uh, they were thinking a lot of social sciences. And I am giving you here my interpretation in fundamental research, I mean, my interpretation for, for a more practical point of view and for engineering in terms of automation or robotics and later on in process engineering, for instance. Also connected to the theory-oriented research is the empirical cycle as proposed by Van Aken and Ferenc. In the empirical cycle, we really want to find a phenomenon, to study a phenomenon. So by developing your, 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 your research, by designing your research properly, via observation, induction, deduction, testing, and evaluation, 
we will see if our hypothesis was correct or not. But it's, this empirical cycle is actually highly connected to the so-called scientific method, where again, you make observations, you need to think about questions, formulate your hypothesis, develop and test those predictions, right? And then you enter a second cycle, a sub-cycle in, in the bigger cycle, so gather the data, so maybe the gathering of the data was not correct. You need to refine, uh, you need to expand, reject, reformulate your hypothesis. You need to gather the data again, and then you develop the general theories. You go for a more fundamental and a more general uh, theory that explains your initial observations. And those two cycles are are of importance so you can you can always talk in your research plan that your project is highly connected to the scientific method or highly connected to the empirical cycle but certainly you need to see that this is not enough this is just the general framework at the beginning of your your project now for instance if you will make observations so you need to explain how are those observations uh, uh, observable where, where. so if you need to gather the data you need to explain what sort of data are you generating the data are you are you going to collect the data uh, are you going to simulate different scenarios those are key elements that certainly need to be part of the of the research plan uh, for a more theory oriented uh, research again it's not only mentioning the cycle but it's fine-tuning your diagnosis tools, fine-tuning your analysis tools, and telling us how are you going to validate your, your, your observations before claiming that you have probably an... If your project is more connected to the practice-oriented research, then most probably you need to make use of the problems of the cycle. Refer to the cycle, of course, in your proposal. Refer to the cycle in your in your project uh, plan, which actually is connected to a problem as a practical problem, an engineering problem. And you need to define it. I have to say that in order to define the problem, you need to understand it. And this is how how you make use of tools to fully understand what is going on. For instance, are you able to replicate the problem via some sort of uh, simulation environment? Are you able to go to the process, change parameters, and see if you can replicate the problem in real time? Now, this is connected to the problem definition and, of course, the analysis and diagnosis. Once you feel like you have really understood the problem, then you came with a uh, plan of action, and then your intervention and the evaluation of the results. Evaluation of the results, of course, uh, is connected to the fact that when we solve a problem, we will create new problems. And that, that's how the cycle is closed. And this is the proposal of Anaken. But also, uh, our textbook proposes a different cycle, the intervention cycle. And here we have five different steps. Again, if you compare both cycles, they are quite similar. Problem analysis diagnosis, design, change, and evaluation. Change is probably one of the, of, the, of the key words that really becomes different. Problem analysis, precisely why is there a problem? What is exactly, what exactly the problem is? And whose problem is it? This is actually connected to the tool of stakeholder analysis. The diagnosis, the reason for the problem, is finally understood. This is the end of the diagnosis phase. Design. We really rely on technical specifications. Those technical specifications should be connected, should be the end of the first two parts of the cycle, the problem analysis and the diagnosis. What are those requirements from the stakeholders? Now, you set the plan in motion, the change, which means that most probably your process is going to, is going to be different. It's going to have a different behavior. Your robot is going to be faster or 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 basically your artifact will follow your desired specifications or not 
and when there is actually a gap between the desired specifications and the obtained specifications, the obtained requirements, then you need to evaluate and see if actually new problems emerge after your plan, your plan is set in motion. This is the end of the first chapter. And I have given you my point of view. I have provided some examples on the research objective and the type of research that we will conduct, whether it's theory-oriented or practice-oriented. And also the inclusion of cycles, not only coming from the book, the intervention cycle, but also cycles that come from the general literature, coming, for instance, from the book of Van Aken with respect to the problem-solving cycle and the empirical cycle. And again, I need to emphasize the fact that only mentioning the cycles during your problem analysis is not enough. You really need to bring key examples. You need to motivate your assumptions in terms of, for instance, simulated events, mathematical modeling, and prototyping, rapid prototyping, where in the literature all the researchers or engineers have used the same methods to answer your questions, to answer your main question, your design or research question, to achieve your objective, and in the ultimate case, to solve completely or partially your problem. And again, we are talking about cycles. It means that once you solve a problem, once you answer a fundamental question, more problems and more questions will arrive. We need to be prepared for that. Now let's continue with the next part of the course unit, chapter two, where I will emphasize the two stages of the formulation of an objective. Thank you.